Peace, peace. Happy now. Now the vibrate, of course. Not too far in the future. Not too far in the past. Right now. Matter of fact, I'm because I was about to just not even do the intro, but I got this uh I, I made a little analogy story, you know, to show how, you know, uh, you know, the ancient ancestors use allegory to teach us, you know, uh, different stories, you know, instead of saying water and, and fire, it could have been, uh, I'm trying to think, of, you know, different names, you know, we give, we personify energies with names, you know, but I, I did like a little, little short mock story you know right quick to just give you example of you know how these how these uh allegories are you know uh in essence delivered now, excuse me if i uh chop it up the delivery a little bit but it should be smooth enough <laughs> but uh so basically uh it's about you know and I ain't even go that deep into it, but like a woman I got, she was born in a dirty town called Backyardia. You know, Backyardia. People in Backyardia grew pretty tall due to the absence of the Moors. The Moors are an ancient people who are known for founding the ancient city of Frontyardia. You know. uh, let's see. And, and then front art, uh so all right. The Moors are the ancient people who are known for founding the ancient city of Front Yardia, where the people don't have to don't have the burden of growing too high, you know. As we grow tall, you know, like in Backyardia, as we grow tall, you know, there's snakes that that starts to come around, you know, as the as the uh, the people of Backyardia grow tall. You know, all of a sudden, snakes start to, you know, be able to come around. And, uh, let's see. And so with that, you know, that's why the, uh, the Moors, you know, have abandoned Backyardia. Like, they, you know, they don't even deal with Backyardia no more. They went to Frontyardia, you know, and, uh... <laughs> They don't even deal with, you know, again, those, those uh, people growing tall, you know. The Moors, again, the ancient people uh, known for founding Front Yardia and, and uh, helping people from having the burden of growing too high. And you're going to see what I mean by burden and how to let reverse psychology uh, vibes play out. But uh, so again, you know, back... That's why the Moors, you know, didn't venture into that land anymore because, you know, now they grew high and they got, you know, uh, snakes and stuff like that. But uh, also, that's why they locked the Great Portal, you know, the Great Portal in between front yard year and back yard year, you know. Now, uh, with this little short little story, because, again, that's basically it, you know. If you didn't get it by now, you know, it's like an allegorical story for grass growing in your yard. <laughs> you know, because in the backyard of you, or the backyard, you know, sometimes we couldn't neglect the grass and let it grow too high. And when grass grow too high, you know, uh, snakes, you know how we talk about, you, you know, I got to cut the grass so I can see the snakes, you know what I'm saying? But two, you see how the reverse psychology vibes work because they're making it seem like in this story you know it makes it seem like oh having snakes around is a bad thing so i want to have my grass short but when all actuality you know you want to you want to grow tall because that snake is the kundalini energy you know what i'm saying enlighten you you know what i'm saying but again on a reverse psychology vibe you know uh that's how some of these you know one man's guy is another man's devil when a new dynasty takes over some more information, they're gonna change it up to benefit what they got going on, you know what I'm saying? So it's that same analogy. You know, uh again, backyardia, you know, where the grass grow high. And again, this so this would be the story from the perspective of somebody trying to brainwash somebody against being, you know, against growing tall. Like growing tall is a bad thing. You know, you wanna be ruled by the Moors. As a matter of fact, I I, I spelled it like Moors, M O O 
O-R-S, you know, like the Spanish Moors, but then also to play again on the little wordplay of Moors, like, you know, like when you mow the lawn, you know what I'm saying, like the Moors, you know. Again, and you catch the analogy, people in the backyard here grew pretty tall due to the absence of the Moors, you know. The Moors are an ancient people who are known for founding the ancient city of Backyardia, you know what I'm saying? Where the people don't have the burden of growing too high, you know. Again, as if that's a bad thing, that's not necessarily a burden, you know what I'm saying? But again, let, let somebody else tell it. <laughs> you don't want to grow too high, you don't want no snakes growing in you, huh? You know, they make it seem like something to be scared of. So, as a matter of fact, so with that, I would, you know, again, make, make it seem like... Uh, Growing tall is something to be scared of, you know. But again, you know, backyardia <laughs> and then front yardia, you know, the front yard where the Moors was ruling and cutting grass and keeping everybody at a certain little even height, you know, taming everybody. Matter of fact, the subconscious programming, you know, uh, dealing with a garden, you know what I'm saying? Like a garden is a personification of taming nature. So if you see that in a movie or in some type of show or something like that, indirectly they're trying to send a message to the viewer to tame your nature, you know. Like, don't be connecting to 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 uh to nature like that. You better tame that. Nah, you know. <laughs> but that's that, you know. But again, you know, so you see that analogy, and they have the the great portal, you know which most yards have, you know. The great portal is basically the, the fence between the backyard and the front yard, you know. So here it is, you know, this little story, backyard, yeah, this and that, you know what I'm saying? As a matter of fact, this is also, too, how we could use story creating in a similar way of allegory like our ancestors to create uh, beneficial subconscious programming, you know what I'm saying, to all of us who already creating cartoons and shows and like playwright and stuff like that you know that's 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 how we doing this you know what i'm saying it's magic used in a beneficial manner instead of to brainwash people to not know who they are you know and again the the, the great portal you have to pass through the gate you know to go to the the front yard yeah you know <laughs> but the legend has it that every seven years, the lock is taken off the gate. <laughs> I forgot about that part. <laughs> no, every seven years, you know, because again, it's within that realm. Every seven years, you know, somebody got to cut their grass. You know, somebody got to, and I cut the grass. But again, like, every seven years, somebody go and uh, unlock the, 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 the great portal, you know, to go cut the, the backyard grass, you know, go deal with the backyard which the backyard could be seen as primordial energy, you know. It's natural, you know, everything, you know, it's not that cookie cutter environment that's being created by the moors. <laughs> uh, you know, the lawn moors. <laughs> you know, uh, so you got this free, you know, like we're able to grow and, you know, there's so many different uh, randomness and chaos, you know what I'm saying? And also though too, how they try to create these little uh, splits in personality, like, well, you know, with so say for instance, with this story trying to get people to choose one extreme over the other extreme when it's really about balancing both of them out, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, yes, we want to connect to nature and deal with nature and intuition, divine feminine, but we also want to connect with the divine masculine and connect with our body suit and, you know, and uh, take physical action in this world, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a, it's a balance of both of them. As a matter of fact, and I use the the number uh, seven two because thinking about the story from uh you know set using the axe to cut cut open the south gate of the primordial mother, or you know that or the vagina uh, area of the primordial mother, and that axe he used was like the uh, like a hieroglyph that uh, you know looked like a seven. Let me see where is it. it out somewhere. There you go. It's the uh, X. There's one the uh is in the met one of the uh symbols in the meta netta. Ancient symbol but 
again though you see how we could take you know spiritual our uh you know spiritual information and guidance you know uh in essence you know our ancient knowledge of what's going on around us you know we could turn it into stories you know through you know this through the use of you know symbology and allegory you know because again i and I had to comment on the brethren because I'm like, at this point, you know, we should know better. Like, well, like some people still trying to make Jesus be alive. And at this point, anybody that's trying to make Jesus seem like a, a true character is doing the same thing that the Romans was doing, Constantine was doing back then. There's, again, because also you see that as much as uh, the people who are trying to fuck over us have been dealing with a, like they, their plan has been very smart, you know what I'm saying? But with that reptilian brain, in essence, like it's repeat, like it's not, like they're gonna kind of try to, you know, do the same thing, you know? So it's like, all right, I just saw the hook the first time, now this time I could duck and, you know, counter, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not saying this is a physical uh, battle <laughs> necessarily, but, you know. <laughs> but that's the, you know, the whole vibe. Putting the, the information into allegory to be able to grasp these higher concepts better. You know, again, so that's what I was going to talk about because I saw somebody, you know, uh, you know, making a video about this on, uh, you know, on uh, YouTube. And it's somebody that a lot of people, you know, for a matter of fact, uh, I'm just saying this, I forgot the brethren last name or whatever on this show, but uh, Dakota, you know, he, uh, be connected with Carl Fresco, you know, and even my brethren uh, told me about a message he got from Carl about uh, <laughs> being uh, like, yo, you shouldn't pay attention to that negativity or something like that in that nature. You know, again, just send out a little insight like that. That's kind of like a little, uh, like a little tea <laughs> with a little insight, you know, because again, I'm starting to realize myself at how much it is about us, you know, uh, exposing certain uh truths and stuff like that and i see so that's why like that energy uh turns into an unhealthy energy in the form of us debating against each other about stuff you know what i'm saying like that's where that energy turns into like what you see in, in some of the you know levels of the conscious community you know a lot of like back and forth with certain people a certain little debate stuff like that but in essence, it's meant for us to, you know, like hold each other accountable because that's what unconditional love is about. It's like, all right, bro, you know, it's about love. I love you enough to say, you know, or just love myself. And again, if I love myself and I love, I, you know, I could be able to give love and send it out externally. But it's like, all right, bro, you know, maybe you don't know. But, you know, to be still, you know, making it seem like, Jesus was a historical figure may be dangerous to people's spiritual growth, you know, because we do have all these allegories, you know. Uh, Cursey Graves got a book called The Sixteen Crucified Saviors, you know. It's a fact that Constantine got together and, and had the two Nicaea councils and took out the Apocrypha and the Book of Enoch and tried to turn the Christ energy into a historical character. That's a fact. And and again, now say fences with a video of like, you know i'm at the tomb of you know jesus and this and that you know it could be presented like not nothing wrong with us just you know questioning everything you know like hey you know say for instance if some evidence showed me to go on that some type of journey like that like hey uh i would say for instance getting signs that maybe uh let's say jesus w was real then i would catch that vibe to like all right well let me go to wherever and see for the tomb or whatever but again through allegory and ancient knowledge, we know what time it is, you know. And again, I don't uh I don't want to label anybody as doing anything. I just like to sh speak on what you know what actions is being put out there, and knowing what we do know and what we don't know. But knowing what we do know, and and uh you know from our spiritual growth and seeing the knowledge and stuff like that, you know again, bro. At this point. It's, you know, it should be very evident, you know, after 16 crucified saviors, we should understand that maybe that wasn't because for, cause for Jesus to be a real person, that mean in all these other different timelines, 
these 16 different timelines or these 16, you know, because some of them probably fall within the same time, but all these 16 different saviors, that would mean that each 16 of those guys walked the earth as well, you know what I'm saying? So Quetzalcoatl, you know, walked the earth, Mithra walked the earth, Horus walked the earth, you know what I'm saying? Krishna walked the earth, you know, like all, all those, if that, you know, again, applying that logic to it, you know, but again, I could just only go off of, you know, the constant flurry of evidence and reason, you know, to see like, well, you know, again, it, it comes from a people who constantly trying to brainwash people, <laughs> you know, people who trying to control people and brainwash them, you know, coming from a people who, you know, just never always showed that they never really was trying to help soul ascension on this plane of existence you know like again got scales you know, got fins kind of smell like the ocean <laughs> you know what i'm saying like, kind of point towards a fish you know but because again i i'm uh i don't have like i'm not showing y'all a picture that's saying hey you see look at this fish you know all I could do is just say, you know, look at the fins, look at the scales, you know, you smell the odor, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's that vibe. But again, just wanted to share that little, you know, little sample of an allegorical story to just show you how, you know, too, how we, you know, anciently been telling these stories, you know. So when you hear a, a you know, a set of... Uh, hitting his mom in a vagina with an axe, you know? <laughs> Matter of fact, again, you take that literally and see that's how somebody on a reverse psychology level would try to make that seem to scare you away from some ancient knowledge. Like, you see, he said is evil. He took an axe and hit his mom in the vagina. Like, how evil is that? You know, <laughs> it's like, but you're taking an allegorical story literal. So you're not going to get the true essence of it. You know what I'm saying? Just like if somebody heard this story, like, oh, I'm going to backyard you, nah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to. I gotta open that that great portal. You know, I'm gonna wait them seven years and, you know, and, and see. Not knowing that seven years might have stand for seven hundred years. You know, or, you know, or chakras, or you know, something even different. You know. But you know, again, that's how these things work. And and when you, as a matter of fact, discovering peeping out people who claim to be about the information but then you know it shows otherwise you know because again if anybody claimed to be open and knowing about spirituality but they still hold jesus christ the as a human who walked earth dearly to like well you know i just still you know i'm matter of fact like i, I think i saw something about doreen virtue going back to that jesus vibe you know again Scales, fins, smells like the ocean. You know, go, 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 go. his eyes on side of its face. Yeah. <laughs> you know, again, it's like your act. It don't line up with the higher intelligence of no. You know what I'm saying? Like, you you speak this, doing this in this area, but then it don't show. You know. Because, matter of fact, no matter how much I've been kind of misinformed and kind of went bit on it a little bit, you know, it's still a certain uh, energy where people could tell that everything lined up though with what I speak on and how I carry myself, you know. Like, with me early in the game, like, I'm not your guru. I'm not, like, I'm growing right along with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, because, again, knowing that, like, I was head first about my growth. So I knew not to be, like, well, you know, you know, it's like, now, now, of course, certain information that come through is like, yeah, they look, I'm feeling this vibe strong from spirit. You know, I'm not saying y'all got a good, that's another thing too. I always let people know too, like, you know, hey, still do your research. Don't just take everything I say is like, you know, the true or whatever, you know, it, like take what resonate with you, leave what don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, you see too, that's the true essence of people that's really trying to, you know, uh, help you spiritually as well, you know, and really help you grow like and that's why too what saved me and the realization of why I always would keep uttering this is all about strengthening your intuition and getting your inner guidance 
to a strong place where you really hearing the voice of your inner guidance over your egoic mind, you know, like, you know, cause then you get to a place where even with this new age bullshit, you're going to always have that feeling of like something's up or this is wrong. You know what I'm saying? Kind of why I would always back up, you know, I don't vibe with guns, but still about protecting yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like something wouldn't let me dive all the way off the bridge. You know, it was like, nah, you know what I'm saying? And two, I, what I get from 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 a uh, you know the vibes I get from high self is they let me know like to that like that that connection with the ancient so going back realizing again because when when I go to this ancient information of Kemet and uh, you know Atlantis Lemuria and just knowing about stuff that existed before Europeans start tampering with the information you know I get the gist of what was really going on so as that new age stuff coming up I'm like well you know what what was the ancestors walking around on that vibe? Cause don't seem like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, but 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 when you just stop at what happened recently in history, you won't even be able to tap into knowing, you know, on that level. And it's not to say the ancestors are the end all be all either. Like nothing is just like, oh, I just gotta use just this. And it like it's a again, it's a balance and a mixture of, you know, uh all type of uh, things, the balance and integration of all types of energies. But that's basically it. Just want to share my little allegorical example with y'all. <laughs> and again, just showing how that you know how that works. Well, I, after a story like that, if I turned that into a hit, like I got together with somebody, and like, bro, let's turn this into a historical. You know, uh, let's turn this lawnmower into a historical figure. You know, we're going to, you know, create this book, create this organization, get together and we're going to throw everybody off so we could be able to control things. So while we really know what's going on, they're going to be worshiping Backyardia and the Moors, you know, <laughs> thinking they doing something for real while we just constantly doing what we got to do and fucking over them. You know. <laughs> I had no peace. <laughs> Happy job. I was the vibrate, of course. I'm not going too far in the future. I'm not going too far in the past. Right now. Peace, peace.